I was always absolutely fascinated by the natural world and wanting to know how things work and why it worked that way. And wandering around outside in the woods. Just, just, I just loved being outside. People laugh at me, but I really remember the first time I actually saw a soil that was well developed. And I thought, like most people think, oh, soil is just brown all the way down and it's kind of boring. We dug down, and I remember thinking it was the prettiest thing I had ever seen. From that time, I just got more and more hooked. And so that was, that was what kind of got me engaged with it to begin with, was going out, seeing this, having this surprise of like, wow, that's really cool. And, um, and I've just been teaching about it ever since. For me, that's how I share what I'm passionate about. My father did that for me when I was tiny. It was my father's way of communicating that he cared, that he cared about me. He would take me out for walks and he would show me things and he would share things with me and he would teach me. And what I realized later on when I started as a professor here is that early experience got translated into the same thing I care about my students. And I remember coming across a statistic that said that um, only 2% of the students are going to go on into grad school and be academics, which meant that 98% of them didn't necessarily know why they were taking soil science. And, and so the challenge for me really was, well, how do I engage that 98%? Well, I had to look for what might be the barrier to their engagement. So thinking about that, why might they not be engaged? So I really wanted to try to, to move things away from this grade orientation and grade only focus and think about how can we, how can we help them have confidence as a learner. So I think a lot of what I tried to then do in the classroom to address this challenge is, well, naturally they're not going to engage um, and, and, and discover the joy of learning if they don't believe that they can. If they don't have confidence in themselves as a learner, then they can't or won't engage in my classroom. And so the, what I did was, first of all, step back and pay attention to what the students were telling me instead of assuming that I know. And then related to that, and kind of an outgrowth from that, was the recognition that, gosh, the way that I give them tests, the way that we tend to traditionally give tests, might be um, bias toward the students that are good at taking tests. What if I give them another way to demonstrate to me what they know and how they know it? What I found was when I give them alternative ways to show me what they've learned, some of it is uh, assignments that involve write a children's book or um, show me creatively something that is meaningful to you that demonstrates that you've been learning something in my classroom. A lot of these students that were more poorly prepared when I give them this chance are remarkably creative, far more creative than the students that know how to game the system and know how to take an exam, they know how to get an A. It's a really great thing to see the student start to come alive and to, to build that confidence in themselves that, you know, I can, I, I can do this and my, my way of thinking is completely valid and I'm capable of being a student at this campus at a higher level and, and that, that's what's important to me.